Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and Tammy, and we are working our way through the uh, Pulse programming activities. Uh, we have worked all the way up. We are ready for activity number nine, which is? Drive in a square. Awesome. So why, why would we want to drive in a square? Just, uh, that, that comes to mind. I mean, we, we drove forward. Right. We learned how to do a, a circle. Why a square? So we're going to see how to drive in the square so you can learn how to program going forward and then also going in reverse if you need to and how to actually turn the robot. Awesome. So we're going to be using what's called dead reckoning. So instead of um, programming it with sensors, in this instance, we're going to be using time. So dead reckoning is just programming it to go a certain distance uh, for a certain time. And then we're going to see the robot make what hopefully looks like a square. Awesome. So I think we've got everything we need. We've got our computer. We've got Cody on um, belts. Um, so what do we do first? All right, let's go ahead and open up the, the example program. Okay. And for activity nine. Activity nine. And it is actually quite a long program. So when you look at this and you pull up the program, you're gonna want to zoom out in the program so you can actually see, and you may not be able to see the full program, but it's pretty long. And the reason why is because we're just programming using time and telling the motors to go to a certain amount of time. And it makes it a lengthy program because we're programming that way of awesome. just using the time. Okay. So is there anything else special in this uh, program that we should know about before we, we download it and try it? Yeah, so uh, if you take a look at that program, the very first part is we see um, that the motors go, both motors are going at 50% power. So right. that is them driving forward, and then the motors will stop, and then we see that the motors are going um, 50 and negative 50. So that is actually allowing the robot to turn. Awesome. And then the robot stops again, and then it goes forward again, and then we see that um, as it keeps executing that repeating pattern of driving forward, stopping, and turning. So one thing I would like to show in the software is you can actually have where the motor block can go in line. So as we're looking at it now, it shows that, but if you go over and click on that motor block, let's show them what it looks like if we didn't have it as an inline input. Okay. All right, so now that we saw that Tim clicked that, now you see that it goes longer. So that's something that you can do when you have a block with multiple motors, you can have it go inline as an inline input and it goes horizontal across the screen instead of going down So what, the way we had it first it actually saved a lot of screen real estate. Right. Awesome, so cool, that's really cool. And I can change that back by just changing that back to right, inline. Right, and change it back to inline. Awesome, so let's try, are you ready to try it? Yeah. Let's turn Cody on and plug him in and we'll see if we can't download this. Are we ready to go? Yes. Oh, let's go ahead and open up the Arduino IDE and see if we can get some data going across. There it goes. And we should be getting a successful message here. There, it said we're successful. All right. So we're ready to unplug it and try it, right? All right. Let's take and, it and try it. Um, when we see it go test it out, we're trying to make a square, but depending on your surface and the battery power, it may not make the exact perfect square that we're expecting. Okay, so let's, let's try it and see. see. Yeah. yeah. So we're back. All right, we're back. And what did we actually see? It didn't quite make an exact square, did right, it? Right, it didn't. So um, that was to be expected just because of the battery power and then the amount of time that we had in the program. So if you wanted to adjust this and try to get more of that perfect square, this is a great extension activity. So you can go in and change the values of when the motor is turning. So when, where you see the 50 and negative 50 motor powers, and we see that it waits for um, about two seconds, so 1650. We can change that value. You can change that to two seconds. You could change it to one second. So that's where you would need to play around with it. Since we're just programming with time and using that dead reckoning, you'll have to adjust those values to try to get 
a better square. You can also adjust those values to make a bigger square or a smaller square. Um, maybe you could even try to use dead reckoning and go through a maze. Awesome. So those are some other ways you could extend this lesson. And the surface that it's on definitely makes an impact, right. right? So we could have taken that exact same program that we have and maybe put it on a different surface. We did it on a smooth surface, but right. if we take it on carpet, we had, might have seen a different behavior, right? Yes, definitely. Awesome. All right, and the real world link for this is in um, different warehouses and manufacturing, a lot of times robots can deliver different things. So they can go to different points within that square, pick up a package or deliver it, and it's very efficient to travel along that same route and drive in a square. Awesome. So that gives them something to try and do as an extension. So we're, I think we've got this one nailed, right? Yes. Okay, come back and we'll do number 10.